Welcome to Worship with the Duns Corners Church. I'm Wayne Everly. This is for Sunday, July 19th. And the story we're talking about is the, the night that Jacob had a dream of a ladder reaching from earth to heaven. In Genesis 28, God says from the top of that ladder, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jacob was on the run. And I wrote a little rhyme to explain why Jacob was on the run. At childbirth, he grabbed his brother's heel. He bought his brother's birthright for a tasty meal. With his mother, he connived that his older brother's blessing to steal. The older brother decided the younger to kill, so Jacob fled, not wanting his blood to spill. Jacob's older brother was Esau. After all the deception, Esau held a grudge against his brother Jacob. His anger boiled over. Knowing that his father was old and soon to die, Esau said to himself, when my father dies, I will kill my brother Jacob. That leads directly to the passage I referred to today in Genesis 28. We're told that Jacob left Beersheba and he set out for Haran. As he journeyed, he stopped for the night at a certain place. He put a rock under his head for a pillow and he had a dream. What a dream he had. He saw a ladder resting on the ground and reaching all the way to heaven. There were angels ascending and descending that ladder. At the top of the ladder was the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Jacob saying, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. All peoples on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. And God said to Jacob, I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go. Jacob woke from that dream. He said, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. Running in fear from his brother Esau, all alone, on a, on a journey to who knows where, uncertain about his future, Jacob had a dream. And in the dream, God said, I am with you and I will go with you wherever you go. The symbol of God's presence was this strange ladder, a ladder connecting heaven to earth, a ladder where God was on the top rung speaking to Jacob. Indeed, I am with you and I'll never leave you. For the rest of his life, Jacob carried that ladder with him. He took the ladder from that dream to his uncle Jacob's land, to, I mean, to his uncle Laban's land. When he got there, he fell in love with Laban's daughter, Rachel. He was so in love, he worked seven years so that Rachel would be his wife. And he woke up from his wedding night to find that his uncle Laban had switched his daughters. It wasn't Rachel he was with, it was her sister Leah. He had been tricked. He worked seven more years to have Rachel as his wife. Now he had Leah and Rachel and their two maids. Basically at this point, Jacob had four wives, eventually had 12 sons and a daughter to boot, along with the massive flock of speckled and spotted goats. And whenever this crazy life with four lives, multiple children, a, a whole herd of goats would get too crazy for Jacob, 
he would walk out to the back of his tent, find that ladder, and, and he'd, he'd hoist the ladder up, and then he'd look to the top of that ladder, and he'd say, Still there, Lord? And the voice would come back to him, Still here. Still here, Jacob. Some 20 years after this, Jacob went back home to face the music. His caravan was a sight to behold. All the wives, all the maids, all the children, all the goats, and all the baggage. Ah, yes, the, the baggage, the, the unresolved conflict with his brother Esau. The night before he was to meet his brother who had threatened to kill him, Jacob had a wrestling match with God. You could imagine Jacob throwing that ladder down on the ground and then he and God set to it. And at one point, God, Jacob holding on for dear life said to God, God, are you still there? I'm gonna go meet my brother who's threatened to kill me. My life is in danger. God, are you still there? And the voice of the Lord said, still here, Jacob, still here. Everything went well. Esau forgave, life went on, Jacob's children grew up. But remember there were 12 sons between four mothers and it's like a, a fire was ready to burst these families trying to all live together and what does Jacob do? He throws fire on the gasoline. He picks one of his 12 sons to be his favorite, the son named Joseph. Gives him a fancy robe and, and showers him with his love and affection. That didn't sit well with the other brothers. One day Joseph meets them out on the field. The brothers make a plan and they, they cast Joseph into a pit. They take that fancy robe that was the cause of such jealousy. They concoct a story of Joseph being attacked and killed by a wild animal, they return to the father Jacob with this bloody robe and say, your favorite son has died. It's hard to muster a lot of sympathy for Jacob. He deceived his brother. He wasn't a particularly good husband to his four wives. His, his parenting skills didn't have much to speak for them, but man, holding that robe with the blood of his child, his beloved child, carrying that robe out behind the tent and setting the ladder up. And a father with a son who's died looking up that ladder. And God must have seemed a million miles away. He's still there, Lord. I, my beloved son has died. And, and a father weeping and weeping and weeping. Are you still there? And God's voice came. Still here, Jacob. Still here. The last time I needed a ladder, the situation was not near as dire as Jacob. No life had been lost. No family relationships had been broken. There was no heated argument or act of betrayal. The last time I needed a ladder was because of coyotes. Sounds kind of dramatic when I put it like that, but it's not really dramatic at all. We do have coyotes in our neighborhood. We run early in the morning, and, and so if we go out before dark, I take along a coyote whistle. Well, I keep the coyote whistle next to our house key. One dark and dreary morning, Julie and I woke up, we got ready to go running, and I guess she was a little groggy. It, it was early in the morning. Anyway, we got out and we were running, and about a mile into our run, when Julie had finally woke up, she said, oh no, not what you want to hear when you're out on an early morning run. She said, oh no, I grabbed the coyote whistle. Well, there's no problem. We could still use the coyote whistle just in case. And then I started thinking, I'm supposed to carry the coyote whistle. She's supposed to carry. I said, oh no, 
Does that mean you didn't get the house key? <laughs> she said, that's exactly what it means. We spent the next 40 minutes of our run brainstorming how to get back into our house without our house key. No one who had a spare key could be reached. We got home and we stared at our house, our warm and welcoming house, so close and yet so far away. We were locked out of our own house. At least we'd be able to defend ourselves in case we got attacked by coyotes as we were outside our house, but there weren't many other bright spots to being locked out. All we had was our coyote whistle. Speaking of whistles, our neighbor Bruce came whistling down his driveway to take his dogs out for a walk. Bruce is always friendly. He's the son of Joyce and Joe Dion from our church. He's a wonderful neighbor. But we never thought to give Bruce a key. The three of us looked at our house, so close, so far away. And we thought, boy, we wish we had given Bruce a house key. But it turns out Bruce had something else that actually came in very handy. Bruce had a ladder. We had left the sliding door on the deck upside our second floor open and Bruce propped his ladder up, climbed up, opened the door, ran out and led us into the house where we narrowly avoided being eaten alive by the coyotes. <laughs> I'm not sure when God used a ladder to tell Jacob that he would always be with them, whether it ever entered the Lord's mind that thousands of years later, a forgetful couple would be so glad that there was a ladder. That's kind of far-fetched, don't you think? But with God, you never know. Maybe the ladder God gave Jacob was intended not just for Jacob, but for all the children of God who came after Jacob. You know, if I think about it, that's not as far-fetched as it sounds. God gave the ladder to Jacob. Later, God gave Jacob a new name and called him Israel. Jacob's ladder was Israel's ladder. That son of Jacob, Joseph, who had been thrown down into a pit. I wonder if as he is wandering around in that pit with no hope at all, if, if he kicked something and thought, what's that? And he, and he reached down and, and it was the ladder. It was Israel's ladder. And, and you could just imagine Joseph in that dark, despairing place, propping the ladder up against the wall of the pit and looking up to the top rung, still there, Lord? And the answer came, still here. I'm still here. Moses led the people from their bondage in Egypt into the desert where they faced struggles. Struggles about bread, struggles about water, struggles about leadership, struggles and struggles and struggles. One day they came to a mountain. Moses didn't know how to lead the people. But when they left Egypt, Moses had carried this ladder along just in case. He leaned that ladder up against the big mountain and he looked up to the top rung. Are you still there, Lord? Are you still there? We're all alone in the desert and I'm way over my head. I don't know how to lead the people. Are you still there? God's voice came back, still here, Moses, still here. In fact, Moses, climb up the ladder to the top of this mountain I have something I want to give you. Moses climbed the ladder and he came back down with the Ten Commandments. As God handed Moses those commandments with a twinkle in his eye, he said, still here, Moses, still here. Joshua just about fainted when he saw how tall and massive and fortified the walls of Jericho were. He grabbed the ladder Moses had passed on to him leaned the ladder against those impregnable walls and, and, and he looked up and he looked up and he looked up and he said, Lord, are you still there? And God's voice came from the top of that ladder, still here, Joshua. And now Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified and do not be discouraged. I will be with you. I will never leave you. David marched out to face that beastly giant Goliath. 
All David had was a slingshot and some smooth stones. All David has was a slingshot, those smooth stones, and his grandfather's ladder. <laughs> He leaned it up against the trunk of that massive mountain of a man, and he wondered, how tall is six cubits after all? So he leaned the ladder up, and he looked, and he looked, and he looked. Six cubits is nine feet, and boy, Goliath must have dwarfed little David. David yelled to the top rung of the ladder, are you still there, Lord? God replied in a strangely cheerful voice, still here, David? And by the way, I've put a bullseye on Goliath's head. X marks the spot. All you got to do is throw the stone and everything will turn out God. Good. God was still there for David. Still there. When I needed a ladder a while back and our good friend Bruce helped us out, it was one small way of God saying to us uh, a couple thousands of years later, Wayne and Julie, I'm still here. I'm still here. But I wasn't being completely honest when I said that's the last time I needed a ladder. There was the time we'd been in Houston. I'd gone to help at a wedding. Our son Alex was in the wedding. We had a great time with friends, seeing our kids. And as we were driving back to the airport to get ready to fly home to Rhode Island, we're almost at the airport. And Julie answers her phone. Alex's wife, Tay, was calling. She said the test Alex had didn't turn out good. He has cancer. And we reached for the ladder. Still there, Lord? I'm still here. Just a few weeks ago, Alex called us. Tay had a heart surgery. He said the surgery didn't go well. It, it didn't accomplish what they wanted. She's going to have to go back in for another surgery. And we grab that ladder. Are you still there, Lord? Still here. Still here. In my years as a pastor, I have stumbled upon Jacob's ladder many a time. A friend back in Houston told me his wife had Alzheimer's. It was getting bad. She lived in a care facility. He would go to visit her faithfully every day. Many days he didn't remember. She didn't remember him. Many days she didn't remember his name, but, but she remembered grapefruit. That was her favorite thing to eat. So he would show up day after day and he'd feed her grapefruit and she'd smile. Day after day, Roy would drive to that care facility and park his car. He'd take the ladder off the top of the car and he'd lean it against the care facility. And he'd look up for a long, long, long time. And then he'd speak up to the top rung of the ladder and say, you still there, Lord? And God's voice would come back, I'm still here, Roy. I'm still here. So Roy would put the ladder back on top of his car and he'd grab the grapefruit out of the front seat and he'd go in and he'd feed his wife. Every cemetery has one. Every hospital has one. Every battlefield has one. Every school has one where, where teachers pour their heart out. Every, every ministry that works with the homeless, the poor, the hungry, they have one. Every counseling office has one. Every police department, every fire department, every emergency services department has one. There is one for parents who feel overwhelmed caring for their kids and and there's one for grown-up kids who feel overwhelmed caring for their aging parent. There is one for marriages. There's one for divorces. There's one for those who are single. And there's one for those who are widowed. It turns out there's one everywhere you turn. Everywhere you turn, there's a ladder. There's a ladder in, in the busy little Greek town of Berea. 1999, Julie and I led a trip in the footsteps of St. Paul, Greece and Turkey. And, and in the Greek town of Berea, we pulled in. 
The, the Bible tells us a story about the people of Berea. It's in Acts chapter 17. And Paul came and preached to them, told them the word of God. And, and we're told that the Bereans were of a noble character. When, when Paul preached to them, they took out their Bibles and examined them to, to see if what Paul told them was true. And so when we stopped at Berea at this small little memorial for Paul, we, I asked all of our traveling partners to take out their Bible. And the Bereans examined the scriptures daily. I, I said, as you've examined the scriptures in your life, I said, have you found one that really speaks to you? And if you have, come and tell us what it is. And person by person came and stood before the group with their Bible. And some of them talked about God loved the world so much he gave his only son. Some said, the Lord is my shepherd. Several said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Then a woman came to the front with her Bible. She opened it up to Genesis 28, 15. That's the verse we read today, the story about the ladder. And, and the part she read, 28, 15, is where God from the top rung of the ladder speaks to his child and said, I am with you and I'll never leave you. She closed her Bible and she went back to the place where she had been standing. She had been leaning up against a wall. And when she got back to the place, she, I could have swore that, that she looked and saw that next to the wall there was a ladder. The woman who was um, reading that verse from Genesis 28 about the ladder, about God being with us always, is my mom. That day I found out her favorite verse in the Bible is Genesis 28, 15, where God says, I am with you. Right about that time, my dad had been diagnosed with a progressive disease and she was reaching out for the ladder. She was looking up, still there, Lord? But that wasn't the only time she ever held onto that ladder. When she was just a little girl, her younger brother died in a drowning accident. When she was five or six, her mom died. Not many years later, her dad had a stroke and he couldn't care for her. She and her siblings were taken in by other families in their church. And how many times did she look up? Did she look up the rung of that ladder? And are you still there, Lord? And the response came back over and over and over again, still there. There's a lot of fear and anxiety these days. Coronavirus, racial unrest and Black Lives Matter, schools reopening, the economy, unemployment. There's plenty of things to worry about, to be anxious about. Today, I hope you know that when you feel those things that, that there's something you can lean on. It's a ladder. And, and I encourage you to stand next to that ladder and, and then lift your head and, and look up. Look to the top rung of that ladder and, and say the words that people have been saying for thousands of years. Speak up to the one at the top of that ladder. Still there, Lord? I know what his answer will be. It's the answer he always gives. He's going to say, still here. I'm still here. I'm with you, I'm for you, and I will always be here. Hallelujah, and thanks be to God.